this very hour. Father God, again, realizing that it's not because we've been so good or that we have earned this blessed privilege, but it's because of your mercy and your divine grace. And for that, we say thank you. Father God, we realize that we just celebrated Thanksgiving Day. But Lord, every day that we open our eyes, every day that you give us breath, is a day of Thanksgiving. Every day, oh God, that we are able to have activity of our limbs and able to realize who we are, it is a day of Thanksgiving. Every time that we're able, oh God, to lift up the name of Jesus, it is a day of Thanksgiving. Every time, oh God, the saints of God enter your house of prayer, it is a day of Thanksgiving. So, Father God, we just come today to say thank you. Lord, I know that there are things that we want to ask you for, but let me begin by thanking you for what you already done. You've done for us, oh God, what we could not do for ourselves. You died on Calvary's hill, Lord. And you rose that third day morning and extended to us, oh Lord, the gift of eternal life. And we say thank you today. Thank you, oh God. We ask that you would please forgive us of our sins because we haven't said everything we should say this week. We may have gone some places that we should not have entered. But Lord, in the midst of your divine grace, you've afforded us one more opportunity. And today is not just another day. This is the Lord's day. And Lord, we ought to just say thank you. For this is truly a day that the Lord has made and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we want to thank you for the St. John Church family. We thank you, oh God, for the celebration of Sister Hudson's life on yesterday. Lord, to have been a member here for 80 years, oh God. What a blessing to be a part of five generations in this church family. What a blessing, oh God. So Father God, we pray today for comfort for the Tackman family, for the Hudson family, for the Blackman family, oh God. For all components of that family, we ask that they would be comforted. And Father God, we pray for the young family. You've heard their name lifted it up today, oh God. And there are others, oh God, that may be going in to the doctor's office this week for a procedure. Lord, I don't know it all, but I know you do. And so I just ask, oh Lord, that they would meet you in that place, in that very hour. Lord, that you would comfort their spirit and remind them that you are the great I am. You are doctor, you are lawyer, you are healer, you are savior. And so Father, we just say thank you today. Father God, we pray for the pastor you've given us here at the St. John Baptist Church. We pray for Reverend Trey T. Thomas, asking God that you would continue to strengthen him, guide him, and direct his path. We pray for his wife, Sister Ebony Thomas, the son, Brother James, and Lord, that you would just keep them, strengthen them, enable them, O Lord, be that support for the man of God and that they would be worthy vessels for your divine purpose. Father God, we pray for the one who will come and proclaim the word. We pray that you would strengthen Reverend Fitzgerald this morning. Fill him with your spirit, grant him clarity of thought, O God, that he may stand and boldly proclaim what thus said the Lord. And Lord, prepare our hearts and our minds to receive your word, to bear witness. For you say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So Father God, again, we 
say thank you. Thank you for just being who you are. Thank you for being God all by yourself. Thank you, oh God, for saving our souls from a burning hell. We ask it all, oh God, that you would continue to dwell in this place and within us individually. We ask it, all blessings, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Amen. We thank God for him, for the good work that he is doing here at the St. John Missionary Baptist Church. We thank God for all of you. We thank God for this wonderful choir this morning that, that sung us all the way up into the throne room of heaven. We thank God for the praise and worship that is in this place. We give honor to Ebony, to Jet, and then to my beautiful wife, Teresa. She's also here. We thank you for your presence here today. Before I get open up the word of God and read therefrom, it is always my custom to pray before I preach because I believe that preaching and praying goes together. So would you bow with me in a word of prayer? Eternal God, our Father, Father of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we come now to your throne of grace to say thank you. Thank you for traveling grace and Thank you for arriving mercies. Thank you for each and every person that is assembled under this roof. We thank you for all of the virtual worshipers that are worshiping by computer, by phone, and by tablet, and whatever means that you have blessed them with. We pray and ask for your blessings now 
upon this hour of worship. We ask and pray that you would touch every heart, touch every mind, and bless us in such a way that when we leave this place, we'll leave better than we were when we came. It's in the strong and powerful and wonderful name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And all the people of God said amen. 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 If you have your Bibles with you today, would you turn with me to the book of Psalms? Psalm 138, commencing at verse 1. And I will end the reading at verse 6. Psalm 138, commencing at verse 1. And the reading from the ESV is this. Psalm 138 of David. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul, you increased. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord. For they have heard the words of your mouth. And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. Verse 6 reads, For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the order he knows from afar. Amen. For our time that we are to share with together today, we're going to have this talk, thought, give thanks to the Lord. Amen. 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 Give thanks to the Lord. Popular story is told of a Sunday morning service. And soon after the Sunday morning service, a woman goes up to the pastor to thank the pastor for the encouraging sermon that he had just preached. The pastor simply looked at the woman and replied, thank you, but don't thank me. Give thanks to the Lord. And the woman paused and said, well, I thought about that. But it wasn't that good. Now on one hand, it's a funny story for us. But on the other hand, it's a sad reality when the people of God find it difficult to give thanks to the Lord. God has been so good. And we have so much to thank God for. You know, there's a popular saying in the in the black church, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And we have so much to thank God for. I, I know that we are in a pandemic. I know that there are coronavirus cases that are rising. But in the midst of all that we are living through and going through, God is still worthy of our thanks. Some time ago I learned this acronym for the word thanks from Philip de Corsa. And this word thanks in this acronym form will help us to give thanks to the Lord when it seems hard and difficult to give the Lord thanks. When you look at the word thanks, it starts with the letter T, and the T stands for things. And we are to give thanks to the Lord for things being as good as they are. Yeah. Yeah. The little things, the big things, and everything in between. The second letter in thanks is H, and that stands for health. And we are to give God thanks for a reasonable portion of our health and our strength. The third letter is A. That stands for adversities. We ought to give thanks to the Lord for using the adversities in our life to rub off all of our rough edges. You remember the Apostle James first said, my brother, count it all joy when you meet trials of various kinds for you know that the testing of your faith 
The end in faith stands for now. Yeah. We ought to be able to give thanks to the Lord for right now. Yeah. Right now is all we have. Yeah. Right now is all we can handle. Yeah. And right now is truly all that we need. Yeah. But then there's the K in thanks. Yeah. We look at that word K and it stands for kindnesses. Right. Which simply means that we ought to give thanks to the Lord for the many kindnesses yeah. that he has shown to us through our family and through our friends, through our associates and our acquaintances. But last but not least, the last letter in thanks is S, and it stands for salvation. And we ought to give thanks to the Lord. I mean, if you're saved this morning, if you've been set free, if your sins have been, you ought to give thanks Now notice here, 
that this particular song right here is a contrast in this verse with the song that comes just before. Yeah. In Psalm 137 and 4, there is silence. But in Psalm 138 and 1b, there is the singing. Yeah. Psalm 137 and 4, there is silence because it says, how can we sing the Lord's song yeah. in a foreign land? Yeah. But when you get here to Psalm 138, yeah. there's some singing going on. Right. And it says, before the gods, I sing your praise. Yeah. And we got a witness here. Yeah. Look at the boldness and the audacity of the songs. Yeah. The gods right here in this particular text, some scholars may argue that they, we was talking about the judges or the kings or the rulers of the earth. Yeah. But when you look deeply at this particular song and you understand the, the other scriptures that line up with it, you have to understand that he's talking about false deities. Yeah. And you and I are living in a time. Yeah. We're living not only in a pandemic, yeah. but we're living in a postmodern culture right. that do not believe in God. Right. Let
should have had a witness right there. But I'm glad this morning I brought my own. Come here, Jeremiah from Lamentations. I can see Jeremiah and the people of God when they were in Babylonian captivity. And while they were experiencing the darkest moment of their life, when you read the book of Lamentations, the whole book is dark. The whole book is dismal. But there's one shining light in it all. I just 